All right, guys, we are getting closer and closer to launch. I believe it's in like maybe 12 hours now. And so I just wanted to go through a couple of the most frequently asked questions, such as uh, should you reroll? Who should I reroll for? Is the game pay to win? Does the game have PVP? Which server should I go to? Uh, how does the gacha work? Does it have controller support, etc., etc.? I will cover all of these questions uh, literally right now. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Tower of Fantasy video. And today we're going to be talking again about maybe about like 12, 13, 14 uh, FAQ questions questions and so i'm not gonna waste any more time i'm gonna go right into it and the first question is should you re-roll are you going to re-roll am i going to re-roll and if so who should we re-roll for so i'm gonna pop up the banner over here this is the cn client any advice that i give today i'm going to try try and call out anything that is potentially going to be different because we have already seen some differences between cn and global some people are calling global actually almost like a completely new game because of nerfs buffs as well as additions of new skills anyway back to the matter at the hand Am I going to reroll? Should you reroll? Rerolling right now takes about 20 minutes. If I can get that down to 10 to 15 minutes, I probably am going to reroll. On top of that, what's really important are the people who are available in the pool. So if I click this open, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of characters. We've got the Meryl, we've got like the King, we've got the Coco, etc, etc. Now what is going to determine whether I reroll or not, first of all, is the version of the game. Uh, at this point, the CN version is at 2.1. So if, for example, we get like 1.0 or 1.6 or 2.0 or 2.1, all of these things are actually going to dictate whether I am going to reroll or not because it matters for the relevancy of these two characters down here, Claudia and Cobalt, as well as Frigga, who may or may not be here. I don't think she's here, but you see these two characters over here, they thrive depending on which patch we get. And so here are kind of like my conditions for rerolling. First of all, these two characters must be relevant. Second of all, these two characters must be on the standard banner, which means you can get them via the purple or the yellow nucleuses. And there is one last thing I do want to say, and that is if anyone has a tier list on any of these, be a little bit wary because I wouldn't trust anybody that has a tier list right now. There are just so many changes that are currently in the global client, in the content creator client. It's really, really hard to tell who is actually good as well as what the characters are actually going to be launched with. All right, and so that's going to bring us to our second question is the game pay to win so yes kind of because as with all gacha systems there is always going to be an element of pay to win right so tower of fantasy is going to feature rolling for weapons and these weapons are going to be accompanied with a skin so as you can see these look like you know they look like characters and stuff but realistically speaking we're actually rolling for their weapons we're rolling for this weapon and we're going to get Meryl along the way on top of that for each of your weapons there is actually a star system so you can see up here two out of six stars that means that there is a duplicate system in which you can raise these stars which will get you extra stats as well as extra effects this is quite similar to the constellation system from genshin impacts however there is also a matrix system which i don't think i've unlocked yet but essentially it's for enhancing your weapons with some even more effects and so that's going to bring us to the third question is there pvp in this game and the answer is yes there is there is essentially a season based kind of system i believe it runs for one month and depending on where you play so for example the top tier people they get 500 dark crystals which equates to about three rolls they get a title as well as a mount if i'm not wrong and then it goes from like 500 crystals to maybe 450 down to 400 crystals and so as you can tell the reward disparity between each of the ranks is actually not that big on top of that gear is actually normalized to an extent so the biggest advantage that somebody is going to have against you are they're going to have weapons that you may not have because all of the duplicates and all of like the extra stats and stuff even the level disparity they're actually reverted to base stats and so i believe that tower fantasy has done this pvp quite well it's actually as standardized as it probably could be is this game cross-platform now it should be and i believe if you see any of the platform stuff it should be in this menu over here and i believe you'll be able to log in via approximately like four to six different methods and your progress will carry in between them now depending on which one you actually log into you do get a bonus icon next question how big is the download so as you might have noticed this is actually an emulator and so for the phone versions i do believe that the client is going to be about 10 gigs and for the pc version it's going to be about 22 gigs which server should i pick now to answer this question you actually need to go to 
your local communities to kind of see like the discussions going on. So for example, I'm seeing a lot of English speaking Southeast Asian and Oceania players. They're looking to go into like the Astral Noah on C and Eden on APAC respectively. However, they've done some surveys. These surveys have actually only reached about like a thousand people and there are 4 million pre-registration. So it's actually really, really hard to tell from just that. The most important thing in terms of your server selection is that you need to go to the servers, the same servers as your friends. And that is because if you don't, then you can't play with them. Unfortunately, I don't really have many friends. So I'm probably just going to try follow an English community in my closest server, which is probably going to be APAC. Some other people follow content creators. I would highly suggest you don't do that. Prioritize your friends over content creators. And so that's going to segue into the next question, which is does my server matter? I really want to stress that it does because this is going to be an MMORPG. It's going to contain a lot of multiplayer content. I'm talking about raids, I'm talking about world bosses, I'm talking about even just like running around and doing stuff with your friends. That is the emphasis. On the topic of raids and world bosses, you might actually need to do some level of coordination, right? So if you're like English speaking and you end up on like a server that only talks Chinese or only talks Filipino, only talks, oh, sorry, Tagalog, or only talks Spanish and stuff, you won't really know what's going on in the world chat. And so it's in your best interest at least to try and get into an English speaking server. Names are also unique to a server. So if I like click through each of these, there's probably like a, a fried chicken X X420 in each of these. And in the future, they might make paid server transfers, but that's all a possibility. Do not bank on that. So yeah, next question. I said names, right? Yes, names. So unlike most mobile gacha games, Tower Fantasy doesn't actually use a UUID code system. I mean, it does, but it doesn't, right? Because everybody is going to have a unique name. So what that means is that if somebody is red chicken, somebody else cannot be red chicken on the same server. What are the best value packs for maybe low spenders or people who just have a little bit of income? Now, let me show you. We've got a monthly. We do have a monthly. It is reasonably priced. I do believe it probably will be around like five or six USD. And then the payout structure is essentially identical to that of Arknights, to that of Genshin Impact. You get some of the paid crystals, as you can see, it's like the white one over there. And then you get some of the dark crystals, which are essentially the ones that are not really paid. <laughs> The next best thing would be the battle pass. Now, I don't know if I can find the battle pass over here, but it's exactly the same as all of the other ones you know. You've got a whole line, there is a free line, and then there is a paid line. However, very similar to Genshin, if you're not really looking for pulls, you could actually technically skip the battle pass. Next, how does the gacha work? So let me just click into a gacha and really quickly, you will see that there are generally speaking about three different types of banners. We've got the gold nucleus banner, I'm gonna switch, we've got the black nucleus banner, and I'm gonna switch, we've got the red nucleus banner. So the one that I really wanna talk about most is this one over here, because you can see that there is a pity counter over here. What this means is that if you hit 80 pulls drawing on this banner, you will be guaranteed an SSR. Now that guaranteed SSR, has a coin flip. It is a 50-50. On top of that, if you manage to hit an SSR earlier than 80 pulls, so for example, you hit 79 pulls, you hit uh, the banner SSR and then you hit 80 pulls, that 80 pull is going to be an SSR as well, but a coin flip. And so what is nice is that there is actually a guaranteed pity for the banner character at 120 pulls. However, what you're going to be using instead of this pity system down here is this token system up here. So I believe these are going to be called like flame gold tokens or something. We're going to head on over to the shop and then you can use them to actually pick up the weapons. So right there, 120 for the banner weapon with the associated character. On top of that, we've also got a one time 30 pity for an SSR over here. It's kind of like a beginner banner thing. Hit it and potentially reroll on it. Next question, does the game have controller support? It does. I can't show you. You'll just have to take my word on that one, but it does. Trust me, guys. Is Tower of Fantasy going to be the Genshin Impact killer? No, it's not. It, it really is not because the revenues from the CN server and just due to the sheer amount of advertising and money that Hoyoverse has and is continuing to actually pump into each of their games, it's unlikely any game ever will be a Genshin killer. Okay, just statistically speaking, objectively speaking, from an economical point of view, it is very, very hard to challenge them. Furthermore, it's just like completely unfair to actually compare the two because like whilst they do have a lot of similarities, like I can get off of my mount and climb and we've got a stamina system, I can jump off and I can do the glide and then the 
combat system is actually quite similar to that of Genshin's, that's actually where a lot of these similarities stop because the core gameplay of Tower of Fantasy is that of an MMORPG. There is more generally an emphasis on like the end game content. If I click uh, maybe that one over here and there's gonna be like all of this, there's gonna be, as you can see, joint operation over here, it implies four player content, which it is, it's four player content. There is a lot of end game cooperation stuff like raids, dungeons, etc., etc. Genshin on the other hand is more like a casual kind of approach. And so my guys, with that, that is gonna bring us to the last question and that is, well, MMORPG, Tower of Fantasy, is it going to be an insane time sink? How long do dailies take? Now, let me just quickly show you the dailies first. Right here, that is not the dailies, that's the weeklies. So we've got the weeklies over here. Weeklies, generally speaking, are actually quite easy. It's not gonna take you too long. If you needed to rush them, you could actually rush them all in two days. And then on the other hand, I'm gonna come over to daily bounty. This is gonna be your dailies, as well as some other daily tasks that I'll talk about in my next video, like a day one rush optimized kind of video. But essentially every day, you get four different tasks. In these tasks, you get pulls. You see that nucleus, you see that one over there, that one over there, and that one over there. The time it takes to actually finish all of these tasks would be about like 15 minutes. It's not too bad. And these tasks, as you can tell, are actually looking quite simple, right? Like do something three times and you can see this text is actually identical to this one over here, which is kind of fortunate. And so yeah, in terms of time sync, especially in the early game, yes, there will be like a major time commitment as you go through to unlock all of these different game modes, going up to level 29, I believe up to 33, 37. However, after that, I do think that the commitment to the dailies is actually a little bit low. Like there is a stamina system up here, dump your stamina and move on with your life. Yeah, you could do that. Or you could spend hours and hours in the PVP over here. You can complete like your map exploration over here. This is, a, this is a pretty big map, man. And it could be pretty hard to actually run out of content if you went looking for it. So my guys, that is going to kind of like wrap up this video. I hope these questions like were actually the questions that you're looking for answers to. And if you do have any more questions, let me know down in the comments below. On top of that, if you did find this video kind of helpful or you enjoy my content, maybe, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. Lots more Tower of Fantasy to come. But otherwise, my guys, as uh, as my own character, oh my lord, once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.